Hi guys, my name is Anne Greis. I hope you're doing well and I welcome you to a new video. This video will be a little bit different because we will try out the GPT-4 language model which just came out today and it's already integrated in ChatGPT. So we will use ChatGPT to find out what are the capabilities of this model to build an own Android app with this model and as an example we will take a calculator app which is in my opinion one of the most famous base apps when you start with Android development. Let's dive right into it. So here you can see we are in ChatGPT and as you can see by this plus here I have the plus membership. So at the time of this video only if you have the plus membership you can actually try out the GPT-4 model. And as you also can see, it's bound to 100 messages every four hours. So um, we have to be very precise with our prompts here. And let's start by um, letting ChatGPT act as an Android developer. So as you can see, just told him that he should act as a professional Android developer and with many years of Kotlin development experience and his favorite UI framework is of course Jetpack Compose. So we start by describing what we actually want to do and that is creating a calculator app. So the first thing we see here is that uh, GPT-4 model is um, proposing us to set up an Android, Android Studio project with Jetpack Compose, of course, um, and then <laughs> design the UI with composable functions for the display and buttons. Then we should implement the calculator logic and finally connect the UI components to the logic. Okay, um, that sounds reasonable. And now the model already starts to dive into the code um, as you can see here, he's creating the first composable, which is the calculator screen. And yeah, we have here a column and display, which he's uh, just creating. And yeah, from just looking at this code, it seems to be quite okay, but uh, we will see in the next step. Okay, so. It finished generating. Um, the next next thing he proposed was the view model actually, and then um, also the connection of the uh, logic here. And yeah, let's see how <laughs> if this generated code can actually be useful, because um, I wasn't expecting that the model already um, generates the whole app but more like um, it would be a dynamic process of yeah, giving another prompt and so on. But let's dive into Android Studio and see if we can actually use this code. So as ChatGPT proposed us, um, we should set up an Android Studio project with a basic Jetpack Compose setup. And that's what I've done here. So you can see we have here the Compose Bone with some yeah, basic implementations for some Compose libraries and also some helpful lifecycle libraries here and of course some uh, Android Foundation. So the first thing we need to do if you follow along the instructions from ChatGPT is to create the calculator screen composable. And now if I just copy and paste the code from the proposed uh, composable here, let's see if all the things match up. So I quickly import all the stuff here. And next up, we also have the display and the button composable here. Yeah, as you can see, um, all this stuff matches up. Quite interesting. Um, <laughs> the next thing the ChatGPT proposed is to create the view model. So let's create here a new uh, view model, calculator view model. Now, of course, we need to inherit from the view model. Let me quickly just copy and paste here. Of course, okay, it's still using live data, not flows or state flow in this example. I am pretty sure that we maybe could also tell it to use state flows because the model is still trained on data until uh, about 2021 or something like that. 
and there should be flows already been, have been around. However, there's not much of logic here until now, but we will later fix that. Let's go back to the K Creator screen and as uh, ChatGPT proposes now, connect the uh, logic with the UI. So we once again copy and paste here. So as you can see, it's red, but the respective dependency is in the project. So let's see um, if I type it in by myself, I can use here the view model. And now we have the full uh, dependency here, but um, let's fix that. And the next thing ChatGPT proposes is to observe the state. And we can do that by observe a state. And also we don't have a respective function here to do that. And at the moment, I don't know which is the right uh, library for that. So let's quickly go into ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT what is the right library for observe a state. It's in step four here. So I say um, in step four, you introduced the observe as state function, which is the respective dependency. And here we can see now the first problem. That is actually not true anymore, um, but the GPT-4 also references the release notes and so on. And if you take a look at that, you will see that the observe as state is not anymore in the lifecycle runtime KTX, but in the compose runtime live data package. So let's put that into our dependencies. Like at Android Studio, we can just um, yeah, copy paste it here. And then because it's also included in the JPEG Compose BOM here, just need to sync and can now go back to our calculator screen and should now be able to import the observer state. So now we can see that the display value is a string. And if we go back to our calculator screen proposal here, then we can see that the display value should go right into the display and the button grid should receive the view model here. And now we can add it to the button grid itself. And as you can see, there's no code yet. And because we're lazy, we'll once again ask GPT-4 to provide us some code for this composable. So we just tell him that he should deliver us the code for the button grid. And let's see what uh, he will generate for us. Okay. And one thing also I noticed is in comparison to the GPT 3.5 model, for example, GPT 4 here is quite slow, but the results are very good at the moment. If we take a look at that, it's of course the grid here of the calculator and we can already see what the arithmetic operators are. And let's once again quickly copy and paste that. And now let's replace it. Once again, we fix the imports. And as the ChatGPT also mentioned, um, we need to implement those two functions here. But once again, we're way too lazy to do that by ourselves. So ChatGPT, please help us and um, implement the logic for the view model. Also, that is done. As you can see, it's quite long. But once again, I will just copy and paste it like a professional software developer should do. <laughs> and we'll replace it with the calculator view model code here. And as you can see, I don't even have to import any further stuff. It <laughs> just works, um, at least from uh, the perspective of, of uh, IDE errors here. So we have here a handle button click. Um, which uh, orientates at the uh, label of the button, as it seems. Um, then the label also seems to uh, set the operation. And um, then we have here the current number, and then it stores the uh, 
the current number as a double, clears it, and um, then the current operation. Okay, the current operation is the label, and the uh, display live data here will be set. So, um, what will be seen in the calculator later, finally, I think. And then handle it's equal button click. So, if all the values are set, it will yeah, calculate the value with the current operation and finally once again clear the set values here. And the calculator result is also handled by the operation which is the button label I, would, I think. So all the arithmetic operations here. As a last step I of course need to put it into my uh, main activity here. So I replace the default greeting here with the calculator screen. But that should also work and let's start. And there it is, our calculator app written completely with ChatGPT and GPT-4 as the language model. And yeah, the UI seems okay, I would say. It looks like a calculator. And let's see if it can actually calculate. So let's do here two by two. And as you can see here, always the last value I clicked appears and it's four. Wow, <laughs> not bad. Okay, and let's do like uh, 20 divided by two and we received 10. Wow, I'm really amazed and <laughs> really I didn't change anything. It's just the code um, ChatGPT provided for us and yeah, wow. So, as we saw, we created our very own calculator app with GPT-4. And yeah, as I said, I'm really astonished by this language model and the capabilities. A calculator app is probably not the compl most complicated thing you can do, but it really shows how well this model understands what we were telling it. It got the idea of a calculator, it knows what to do, and it also provides a UI which yeah, seems okay. Uh, we can see it's a calculator, it looks like a calculator, and all, all the functionalities um, are given. And yeah, and even if it was very entertaining to see what ChatGPT does with our prompts and how it creates our app, um, we should discuss one or two things here. So one thing, in my opinion, is that we as software developers shouldn't be like they will steal our jobs but we should see those AI tools as helpers in our everyday jobs. So if I come into a new language for example and I'm not familiar with all the vocabulary but I know what I want to do, I know what my uh, general programming toolset is, I can use those AI tools to uh, help me with that. I maybe also save time and therefore money when I don't need to Google complicated stuff, but I can directly look it up by using such tools like ChatGPT, which um, know about all the capabilities of those programming frameworks and they can help me by finding my solutions. And of course, as I said, the calculator app is a really um, basic example, but if you have a more complicated app, you would never completely generate your app with ChatGPT or something like that. But if you have a simple screen, for example, you could maybe yeah, use those tools to help you build um, your stuff. What I would like to know from you, are you already using such tools in your day-to-day -to -day life as a developer? And if yes, um, do they help you or are they more annoying you because uh, they provide um, wrong code for example and you have to fix it and so on what is your experience and what are your expectations in the future from those tools I hope you had some takeaways like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, activate the notification bell and I hope to see you soon